Let's take a look at editing multi-track drums for timing in this video. Now, I'm gonna take a look at this section, which is relatively busy in this song. Let's listen to a little bit as is. With a click. So it's relatively busy. Lots of little rolls and ghost notes. Not a terrible performance, but not right on. So let's look at what we need to do. Now, these were recorded in this project, so I don't need to do this step, but in case you're importing drums in, you want to make sure that the tempo is analyzed according to the tempo of the song. And that's important so that transient markers and beat markers are all in sync with the timeline in case you want to use flex to make any time or tempo changes. So. Here in the audio files folder, I've done several takes here. This is the take we're looking at. It's already in a multi-track set. And that's the way it happens by default when you record into Logic Pro. But in case you've imported them and they're not in a multi-track set, what you can do is right-click and under Tempo, go Create Smart Tempo Multi-Track Set. So that being done, I'm going to hit E to open the editor section. And I have Smart Tempo. And then I'm going to go... Remove original tempo and analyze again. I'm prompted with the warning and that's fine. Now, again, you won't need to do this if you've recorded your session within Logic, but this is a good kind of safety measure to take if you're importing them, even if they're from another session in Logic. So let me close that up. Now, I've got these grouped and they're all in a group. And I'll just show you briefly the group properties I have. Editing and quantize locked audio. This is really important for what we're going to be doing for this kind of time-based correction. I also personally like having track alternatives because I am using alternatives for some of these takes here. I'm on alternative C and I've got different takes on different alternatives. And I also like record enabling in a group so I can just hit record on one and they're all enabled. Those are my personal settings. Of course, yours may vary. So with that done, I'm going to turn off the Q reference track for everything. We don't want to use this just yet. We want to analyze the transients and make sure that they're analyzed properly. And with that done, I'm going to click on the kick drum and hit E to open the editors and just switch to the file editor. Now I'm viewing the overhead over here. We can see. So let me just click on the kick drum and there that'll update it. And now with the halo around here, I want to audition this kick drum part. So I'm going to use my preview key command. And just to show you where that is. I have it here, preview assigned to option and the space bar. So with that done, let's listen a bit. And that's from the beginning. And I just wanted to make sure that that's what I was expecting to hear. So now under the audio file menu, I'm going to go detect transients. It's going to go through a bit of an analysis. And I analyzed it before. That's why I had that message. But now it's going to reanalyze. And then we can use these plus or minus buttons to make them less or more sensitive to what they're going to recognize as a trigger. And I want to reduce this because I know these are snare hits, for example, but I don't necessarily want those. So I'm clicking the minus button until those go away. All right, so let's start with that and look and listen for a bit. It's looking good. It's capturing just the kicks. Now, for example, there's one where there was an extra hit. And I'm liking the strength over here, but I don't need that. So I can just double click on that one and get rid of it. So I'm going to click in there and start from there with the option spacebar command. This is where they're playing quarter notes together. So this section won't have any false triggers. It's good to go through the whole track. I'm just going to go through part of it for now to show you the workflow. But these are all looking good. All right, so it's pretty much getting what I want. Now let's go to the snare track. I'm going to click on that. And there we've updated it. And I'm going to detect the transients for this one. And same thing, I've already detected them before, but I'm just re-detecting it now to start from scratch. And here again, we're going to need to play with the plus and minus, from, in this case, the minus button, to make sure we're not getting any more triggers than we need. Okay, so, like, for example, that's a kick drum and that we don't need. So let's 
use the minus button a bit. And there are a lot of ghost notes here, so we've got to be careful. All right, let me go with that. And I'm going to just select the snare track and bypass this processing. I want to hear it without any gating or anything like that. Okay, I don't mind that it's getting those kicks because they're fairly prominent in the snare track. So it's catching all those little ghost notes. Those little roll notes. All right, I missed that one. Now, again, the more accurate you get here, here I'm going to use the pencil tool, which I have set as my alternate tool, so I can hold down Command, click there, and then just move it to exactly where I need it. I'll just put it right there. Let me zoom in a little bit to make sure. Put it a bit earlier and click back, and let's continue listening. So here's another example of a really quiet one there. I don't mind if it misses some of those really quiet ones so that they don't get affected. So there's one where I might want it in. So command click, and I'll just zoom to make sure and then move it just a little before. So it's right at the first transient. All right, so you get the idea. We go through the track like that. Now I'm going to hit E to close this up. And now I'm ready to use these as the Q reference. And all of these will be affected because they're in the same group. And I have the flex group setting set here for quantized locked audio. They'll all get affected based on these transients. So with that done, I'm going to turn flex mode on on one of these because they're grouped. It'll apply to all. I'm going to go to slicing mode. And if I just click on the other tracks, you'll see that they're all set to slicing. And I have these options at the default length. And that's fine. So now I'm going to turn on flex view over here. And Flex is enabled there. And I can quantize now. So let's say I'm going to try quantizing to quarter notes to start with. And I'm going to start with that. And an important parameter for this is that we use this Q range to omit specific notes. I'm going to set this to a 30-second note to start with. So that means notes farther than a 30-second away from the grid will be ignored. So that's enough that it'll catch those little quick roll notes. So let's listen with the click. So this is the busy part. You can see where the compression and expansion is happening. All the rolls are intact. And if I'd set this too high, we wouldn't get the results that we want. It would probably capture those notes and yeah, it'll probably mess up those rolls. So you want to go with the lowest value you can. Now, let me just listen to some of this again from here. So for example, something like this, is that right on beat three? Yeah, it is. But if you need to make a timing adjustment, you can click here and create manual flex markers and pull them in or out as necessary. So all the little ghost notes are preserved. Great. Now, again, if there are any mistakes, you can go in and create these manual flex markers like that by clicking there and then moving and dragging as you need. And in this case, I want it snapped right to the downbeat. And if there's any slightly sloppy quarter notes, like we heard some of these weren't exactly on, that's a result of the transient analysis that we were editing not being exactly on. So the more you go in and zoom in and make sure these are exactly at the start of the transient, the more accurate you're going to get. Now, I would argue that something like this is just a little bit of natural human kind of amount that's off the grid, certainly acceptable. And it's up to you how tight or loose you want to get it. But I think this sounds pretty good like this. <laughs> ¶¶